Health benefits of sugar tax. Traditional thinking has been as big as better, but with time passing by, especially in the times where we stand, it may not always be true. Whenever we look especially on parameters of obesity, we have to admit that there is no region which is immune for this. In fact, it is becoming a global epidemic. And coming to the problems, the problems are plenty for this. It doesn't even spare our teeth or heart or even the brains as well. And it does cause a lot of problems, which comes out heavily on the economy, which has to spend in huge amount, literally in billions of dollars, uh, their local currency to take care of their population to help them again trying to re-lead a better life. The problems are in plenty. Lifestyle diseases or disorders are increasing day by day. And when they have been trying to sort out the problems, what is the reason for that? Then WHO, World Health Organization, proposed that free sugars intake, which is in terms of sugar, sweet and beverages, must be reduced to take care of this global burden in the form of obesity. In fact, some of the common forms in which they are taken is glucose, fructose, sucrose, or even table sugar. So the reason why I chose for this uh, policy was not only as I have already said it, that it tends to cause or consumes a lot of resources of the economy that also causes plenty of other disorders as well in terms of diabetes, obesity, or even affecting the other vital organs of the people as well. So especially when we try to see for the impact of goods with external contest, so just the deadweight welfare loss for this problem is quite a large significance, in fact. So the solution is, in fact, to impose a tax which raises the price and reduces the quantity to Q2. Okay. So similarly, what about the demerit good? So what happens is in addition to external costs, we can class sugary drinks as demerit good. That is because people may be unaware of the personal costs which is involved in sugar consumption. Alternatively, people may be aware sugar is bad for you but struggle to reduce consumption because of its addictive quality. So that is why it should be taken care. In fact, it does lead to decline in energy and also endurance which can only be solved by taking more sugar. In fact, for one of the studies based in a UK, it showed an average resident consumes around 240 teaspoons of sugar per week, but even without realizing that they may be hidden in a lot of other components. Similarly, when we try to take care of this, not only it would raise revenue for a country but also save a lot of its resources as well for example the funds which is being spent by a country on the growing health problems of sugar consumption for example in terms of diabetes clinics obesity clinics similarly the amount which will be gained from this can be used for much better purposes like for the preventive health care or even about the education Moreover, if shifting supply and consumption is implemented, for example, to let's try to give a simple example. For example, if someone is going to a, a mini restaurant or snack bar like a Mac, so they tend to give free cola refills. But rather than that, of course, they can be giving is something like a, a, the free Coke can be replaced by a bigger Mac. Of course, uh, they can also be supplemented with a much more healthy alternative or maybe even free water as well. So why not? 
the people will be, I think, much more happy to take that. So, uh, it can be taken care, uh, this tax can be put up on such kind of sugary items to not only encourage the producers in the uh, soft drink industry to reduce the added sugar, but also to promote the other activities. When we try to look around its history, so it had started way back in 1916 in Ireland, and the the tax will be applicable to products as soft drinks, fruit drinks, sports and energy drinks, and even the vitamin water drinks. Although it will be sparing the unsweetened milk, the milk products, and of course the pure fruit juices. Uh, this tax has been implemented in the different geographies. For example, even in Mexico as well, when they implemented this sugar tax, they did experience a drop of almost around 5.5% in 2014, which increases increased by 4 more percent in the next year. Although, what about its conclusive health impact will have to be seen. Now, going to the France as well, similar approach was Im implemented. However, there is no conclusive research data how much was it really able to impact on the drink's effect. Life is not all about so grey or black or white. Similarly about this, and this is the reason we need to evaluate this as well. For example, Oh, seeing the side effects, the Danish government abolished the sugar tax due to the job losses which was happening. In fact, the poor were paying a much bigger percentage of the income while trying to compare versus the rich people. So, in a lot of countries as well, it's been seen in a very negative way. So, in a logic pathway modeling for this sugar sweet and beverage tax, what can be done is it it needs to be promoted about the change in consumption for the targeted beverages in response to the price increasing the own price elasticities or even change in the other beverages in response to the price increase, which will lead to reduction in energy intake. And of course, it is going to lead to betterment of the overall quality. So it can be designed in a natural experiment with longitudinal consumption, various cities can be targeted, and to lower income neighborhoods, every city can be matched on foot traffic and the census data. So price assessment can be done for the topmost food selling items and targeted at chain grocery, small grocery, drug stores, which sell the most common single serving or the common lodging size. So the samples can be taken for these two cities and pass through can be done seeing in the changes in inventory, consumption pattern can be looked with perspective of intercept surveys, knowledge and attitudes should be taken in care of. Post survey will have a very important part especially considering the baseline surveys in these cities. And of course, when a synthetic control method is done with in comparison to intervention analysis, we have to compare also the analyzing the effect of tax on prices is complicated by the fact that the country's tax is also getting imposed national wise at once. This means there is no conventional control group that one can use as a baseline for affecting the tax. Instead, the re that's the reason I made use of control commodities, which is untaxed comparison goods that are not substitutes of the tax products. So that's why I took the two approaches to estimation, one based on synthetic control method and the other based on intervention uh, analysis. And the intervention analysis also seem to yield somewhat more precise estimates than the synthetic control method. Thank you.